City of Northland, Channel 8, keeping you informed of events in your community. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you to our special meeting of the City Council on January 16th. Lisa, will you call the roll, please? And thanks for being here with us tonight. Thank you so much. Mayor Dodge. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Escabel. Here. Council Member Sowers will be absent. Council Member Lighty. Here. Council Member Downey. Here. Council Member Brown. Here. Council Member Whitman. Here. Council Member Duran Molica. Here. Council Member Wilford. Here. We only have one item tonight, and that is CR 24. Lisa, will you read the title, please? CR 24, a resolution appointing the Denver Regional Council of Governments Dr. Cog representative and alternate representatives for the city of North Glen, Colorado. Moved. Sorry. Moved to approve. Second. Second. Sorry. Thank you. Jim, can you give us a little background, please? <laughs> Yes, uh, thank, thank you, Mayor and uh, members of council. Um, first of all, thank you all for, for joining us on Tuesday night at a special meeting. Um, we, uh, we don't normally call these meetings very lightly, so uh, it's obviously very important that we take some action tonight. Um, it was brought to my attention on Tuesday of last week that um, we were not going to have uh, either the primary appointee or the alternate appointee available to attend the Dr. Cog meeting uh, tomorrow night. Um, in Years past, um, sometimes we have just not attended those meetings, but um, it was brought to my attention on Thursday that um, there was a pretty critical vote occurring related to the uh, Transportation Improvement Program funding um, split, um, as Dr. Cog has been working on this for about a year to determine uh, how they're going to do regional and sub-regional splits of future grant dollars. Uh, they're very few and far between, and so we want to make sure that uh, the northern coalition, if you will, of the cities and Adams County has a good uh, uh, voting block there on, on Wednesday night. I've got Brooks Voboda here to answer any questions about that if we need to, but the real bulk of tonight's discussion is uh, we need to add essentially a third person that could serve in an alternate capacity. Um, so in this case, it would be uh, the second alternate representative. Um, and we've uh, inserted uh, Joyce Downing's name, Councilmember Downing's name, into that line um, and uh, present that to you for consideration tonight uh, for approval. Is there a discussion? Um, so I saw that there was a previous email communication with a different council member's name as, as an option. Um, can we talk about the process for that and why this resolution has a different name but we didn't actually have a discussion about the other mm -hmm. people? Yep, there. I, can, I guess I can handle that. So um, we did go to the city attorney to um, you know, obviously get some guidance on how to proceed. And um, one of the things mentioned was that we could temporarily write a letter to put somebody's name in there to act one time as an alternate. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing that, we would rather do it in memoriam by adopting a resolution with someone's name. When it came time to discuss who that person should be, I definitely will take responsibility for putting Joyce's name in there. Um, after talking with her, she was interested in doing it. And in my eyes, she is the most qualified person with all of the transportation background that she has, serving on um, NADA for years and also Smart Commute and Dr. Cog in the past. So she knows the routine. And I just believe that you know there's value and expertise and she would make the, the most sense. And it's, isn't that the second alternate will be needed that often? That the first and the second, I mean, I'm sorry, that the primary and the first alternate are absent I don't think um, it will happen very often, but just in case, we would just like to have it in a resolution that this is the person that will take the place if necessary. When we did our, I'm sorry, 
my hands lit up. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. When we did our when we did our thing, you know, when we were first elected to council, we swore in the new members, and then we went through line item by line item with, you know, who was going to take what responsibilities. Did we ever come back and talk about what Joyce was going to take? Because at that it was time, the meeting you meant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Because um, I wasn't sure whether we had ever done that or not. Yeah. Um, for me, um, I don't really care because I don't want to go. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be really honest with you. But I do believe that um, we do need somebody who is very familiar with it and who knows what's going on. I'm always going to be honest. I didn't want to go to this, and, you know. Um, so I would be... I have nothing against Jenny doing it. I know that she would be able to do it 100% and do an excellent job at representing the city of Northland. I would feel more comfortable if someone who has represented the city of Northland before and who understands all the ins and outs of Dr. Cobb is the alternate this time. So, and maybe this is a question for another time, um, and, and maybe it's something, to be honest, that we can address at our retreat. It, it echoes the process question from that person. Yeah, and so I'm just wondering about, I, I felt like we've been here before where there was a, a name placed in there without discussion. And so I just wondered if there was a time that we could talk about that. Maybe it's not tonight. No, it Maybe. is tonight, but I want to go back on that. So I'm going to go back further then now if you're okay. going to call, you know, question to why Joyce's name is in there. Um, because originally it was discussed amongst the members Julie Malika, Jordan Sowers, and Jenny in a private meeting that Jenny would be the one to take this position because they couldn't attend. Okay. So when we're talking transparency, I personally feel this is the best way to handle transparency. Instead of just putting a letter through saying one time that this was going to work, I personally felt that we're talking about it now. You have the choice to vote or not. You can vote whatever way you want to vote. But um, you can't say that I'm not being transparent by putting it out like this. And that is not what I'm saying. Okay. That's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. Um, my, uh, and I'm not, I'm not making a statement. I'm actually just asking a question. I'm wondering if this is the forum to have the discussion or if the discussion about the process should happen another time. Because I, I'm just getting confused, and I want to make sure that as we move forward that everyone understands how we make decisions like this. Mm -hmm. And so it just feels like that very first night where we had a lot of questions about how did this name get here, but when I receive an email that says one name and then a resolution that just has another name in it, I don't think either way was right. So how do we figure out, why isn't the resolution blank? Like, we need to fill this spot, so let's have an open discussion about it. I don't understand the problem. And we could have done it that way, but we were being rushed to get this appointment made, and. I'm sorry that I will still stand by. I believe mm -hmm. the person with the best background deserves the position. To me, it seems very cut and dry and very easy. So, but don't we all vote on it? So, yeah, yes. we do. Vote. We will. But okay. in some cases, from my perspective, I look at the mayor um, as as the person that can direct that better. You know what I mean? Okay. Because for me, I forgot something. You know, and I'll be really honest with you guys. I forgot that we needed to come in and vote it on. So that's why I like to, at times, rely on the people that have been in council longer than me, because mm -hmm. I need to be reminded, no, Becky, we need to vote on that. We need to go forward like that. Um, I, from, from my perspective, I'm only talking about me. I have no idea about the email until I got it from Jim that there had been any conversation. And we can't do that. You know, we can't. It's just like me. I'm a voting member on Nura, but I can't call Joyce or you up and say, hey, I can't make it. Can you go in there and vote for me? Um, but it's one of those things where there really is not, in my opinion, I'm just giving it to you because, you know, one of the new ones, there's not a handbook that we can go to and say, okay, in this case, you know, there is, I mean, if you did far enough, but I'm very impatient, so I usually go to the mayor or one of the long-standing council people now that Joe's off, I'm kind of, you know, stuck between Marcy, the mayor and Joyce. <laughs> so um, when, it, when it comes to something like this, because with Dr. Cobb, here's my thought. With Dr. Cobb, our new people who I'm sure, you know, are going to do a great job, but Julie was partnered up with Jordan because Jordan has to do this. So that's why I felt like that was, you know, okay. perfectly fine. 
but I don't think that we should have our second alternate. And again, I totally think Jenny can do the job, no problem at all. She can take care of it. But I don't feel that she has enough experience in what's happening with the city right now and what's happening with Dr. Call. Um, your other question, just because I feel like I should answer them. Um, I, I really have been out of this whole thing, you know what I mean? But I guess I wasn't surprised to see Joyce's name because I felt that, like I told you, I had no interest in throwing my name in the hat. Um, and I don't know how Marcy felt about it, but I just felt when I saw it today that, okay, this, the mayor has made an executive decision of some kind, you know, of, that's how I kind of looked at it, okay. that she feels most comfortable assigning Joyce to this, and I, in turn, I'm just telling you how I processed it, I trust her to make good decisions for the city. So that's how I work through it. So if I'm, I just want to paraphrase, because I just want to mm -hmm. understand, like I said, to me, I'm really not even questioning Joyce versus right. Jenny. Those were just the two names that I saw in right. two communications. Mm -hmm. I'm still going back to, I just want to make sure I understand the process. So for this type of appointment, we do vote on it. Is that correct? Right. And the, because this happened at the first meeting, and I mean, that was the first meeting, I was like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 okay. Um, what, how do, how do names get considered? So it sounds like in this case, Mayor Dodge, you just said this is what I recommend, and we came together to vote on your recommendation. Mm -hmm. how, how do we know what everyone thinks outside of the vote? I think we're lacking a process. I mean, um, personally, this has never been in question before. So, um, and, and I apologize. I'm really not trying to be dense. I'm just, no. when I saw this communication go by, I thought, well, I'm definitely coming to the meeting because I was invited. Um, but I, I'm confused. And so I'm not trying to be. A lot of times as a council, because we can't all get together all the time, so it is an email, one person at a time, because we can't um, put more than two people on an email, and I just do one at a time, or I go to people that I know that would have that information for me. Okay. I go to Jim or something like that. But basically, it has to be an open communication from the city council. We have to be able to talk and discuss things. You know, what in my mind, what really should have happened is when that phone call was made. Whoever made that, who, like Jordan and Julie, okay, mm -hmm. they have previous engagements, they can't do it. They should have picked up the phone and contacted each person on city council and said, what do you suggest we do, you know? Or at least gone to the mayor. I, I believe <coughs> that it should go to the mayor. I mean, you yeah. know, when there's something that's that what question. I question. Yeah. Yeah. I you emailed Carol Dodge to me or anyone yeah. else, so. And the city manager. Or the city manager and or, so. Mm -hmm. okay. but, but back, can I, uh, but back to the process, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, question, I really do believe that we should put that as an agenda mm -hmm. item uh, during the retreat. I mean, because these are things that, unfortunately, you know, come up and we really need to work through them, you know. Because I, I know, because I've been here for, you know, a few years. Uh, you know, but Julie doesn't know or Jenny doesn't know. So um, these are things that we need to talk through, you know. So. It'd be nice if we created, like, a cheat sheet. Because in two years, you know, it's going to, it's going to flip again. again. Right. You know what I mean? Or, or just a, a basic understanding of the mm -hmm. process. Right, right. I don't think that there's anything clearly laid out. Um, and um, the original email to Carol and, and Jim, really, that I sent, I was the one who, you know, put all the dots together, like, okay, we have an issue for Wednesday night. Um, and then, you know, I did suggest Jenny's name in there because I asked, hey, we need someone for Wednesday. Can you make it? Do you have Wednesday off? She's like, sure. And so, um, honestly, I, I, I think it turned into a bigger deal than I originally thought it was going to be. <coughs> I just wanted someone to go on Wednesday. That's yeah, all I want, yeah. to wave, oh, raise their hand. Um, you know, I'm new to Dr. Cog, too, and so I reached out to them. What do we have to do? This is the process that they recommended. And um, that email went to, you know, Carol and Jim, and then... I felt like it was out of my hands at that point in their decision moving forward. Sending out that first email with Jenny's name on that, that wasn't me. I didn't force anybody to do that. That was the core so, recommendation. Yeah, so it's just, you know, I, I just don't want to, I, I think this just turned into a bigger deal than it needs to be. 
Can I? But it does. It does talk about the process and the lack yeah. of. Mm -hmm. I think lack what of. I, I really thank you for saying what you said because I think if we can um, address it at the retreat or even in a future meeting, but I think to take each incident. I don't know, that's a bad word because that makes it sound like a thing. But to right, take right. each situation and sort through it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as they mm -hmm. come, because it may not need that we need to outline this fancy process. Right. But if we can at least sort through what happened here and learn from that, I think I think that'll make us tighter. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree, agree with, with you. you. I don't know if my you know I don't mean I do this a lot. I'm a Libra, by the way. So I try to play the scales all the time. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I love you, Alifa. I don't know if the retreat is the right time because we have so many other things on the agenda. But if you mm -hmm. want to do it then, I'm totally, I'm totally cool. I just want to make sure that we get all the other things that we have on the agenda. And this could actually be like a full study session, you know, or at least a good portion of the study session to weed out these exceptions to the rules and how they are handled and stuff. So that's the only thing I'm going to put out, you know. Mm -hmm. The retreat is perfectly fine with me. I just want to make sure that we have enough time and we spend enough time on this subject so that when we leave, not only are you guys all set and I'm all set, but that next group that comes in in two years is all set too. Well, you know, maybe we ask Jim, you know, <laughs> what, what is the, you know, do we have the time or not? And if not, I mean, it, whatever, if it's a study session or whatever it might be, it, I'm fine. So, um, the, the, we can definitely have this as a topic, um, but really the intent of the retreat is to identify topics and prioritize topics as opposed to diving in and solving the issues in that one afternoon. So um, I've written this down as something we'll definitely have on our list. Um, and I think back to the, the challenges we had a couple months ago, and I think the big challenge that we collectively faced is that the charter requires that organizational meeting to be the first meeting after the election is certified. And so um, it doesn't really give the council, the new council, an opportunity to uh, be oriented. What are the committees? What are the boards and commissions? And so um, if we you know, discuss this at a future date, I think that might be something to kick around as well, is that does that charter provision still work or not? You know, Do you need to buy yourself some time there? Um, but again, that's a policy matter and would require ultimately the voters to approve that. Right, because anything that affects the charter has to go out to the voters. Correct. Right. The, yes. the other thing I, I just want to mention briefly is that um, Councilmember Mullica brought this up, that the idea of a temporary assignment was Dr. Cog's idea as a way to solve the problem where they don't know our process, they don't know that we really do these by resolution. And so, um, you know, when I got it on Tuesday, I kind of kicked it over to Corey and then I was, didn't, I didn't realize either how important the vote was that night until Thursday. And uh, the process that Corey had recommended was this idea of like, well, send it out and if no one objects, then we're good. And I think I talked to almost all of you about this last week um, and or got emails. And so that was when the, the mayor and I chatted even more on Friday and, and made the decision that we better put this as a resolution, call a special meeting, um, which is why you got the notice very late on Friday. I, think it was, are you, are you I have a question and then a comment. Um, one, so, you know, in, in talking about this process and wrapping my head around, you know, why we put one person's name in the blank on a resolution, um, you know, Carol, when you and I had spoken on the phone, you had expressed some concern that, you know, um, you wanted to go and you felt like you were the most qualified. Um, so I'm curious what changed between our conversation and when the resolution stuff was sent out. Because being under pressure and trying to work through who the best person should be, I was thinking, well, you know, as the mayor, I probably should be the representative because I am the mayor. And then I thought about it and said, well, not really, because I really believe Joyce has way more experience on those um, <coughs> committees and boards than I do. And being familiar with it, I thought for this instance and this vote, she made the most sense. She was also open to it when I spoke to her to take the position um, you know, for the rest of the, the two-year term. So, that was why it changed. It was okay. nothing deep or diabolical. It was that I felt she was the best choice, so I stepped aside. Okay, that's great. Thank you. I appreciate a little bit more of the, what happened there. Um, and then, you know, just, just a comment, um, since we are talking about process, I really want to echo what um, Councilmember Lacey shared 
um, in that, you know, we really should have a conversation at some point about in the future, do we come forward with these resolutions with people's names already inserted, or if we leave them blank and have a conversation, given that every single one of us has a vote here and that we're not a one person majority, um, whether or not we have a title. So I, I really hope that we find time to do that because I think it would go it would go very far in getting us all on the same page. So and I'm and I'm more than happy to, you know, defer to council member um, Downing, uh, she's got decades of experience that I can't even begin to touch. Um, but I do want to express that I am interested in Dr. Conk in the future. So there we go. And just, just for a comment, uh, it's not always that we put names in a resolution. Many times they are blank when they come through. But this time, uh, the mayor decided to do it. You know, just to let you know, but it's not, it sure. doesn't always appear with a name. Is there any further discussion? The vote is open. The vote closes and CR 24 passes unanimously. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Um, I'm just wondering, this does bring up a very valid point. Are there any other of these boards that we need to start thinking about having an alternate on just as a you know, a safety catch moving forward? Um, it would be, as far as uh, NADA, for sure. Um, you know, you have uh, Brooke is an alternate, um, and then whoever the voting member in, it would be Julie. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Cog, NADA, Dr. Cog, and then. I mean, Metro Mayor's. Metro census, Mayor's. But I don't really. Right. You can do that with the email. So. And then I don't know about CML committee. I mean, you have a alternate, and you have. The, the voting member, so you may have that issue because that's the only two that can vote. I think that's it. I think that's the future, but we're going to have to discuss it when it, As it comes. I was just curious. And there may be more, but I, those are the ones that pop up into my mind at this point. Okay. The rest of the boards are we are basically liaisons, um, right. so we don't really we can give input. Of, really um we don't vote got it all right well we don't have any more business tonight so i will adjourn the meeting thank you very much thank you thank you yeah.